Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about human nature. We're going to be asking, are people good or evil? Naturally, that is, so no circumstances can change, but are people born good or born evil? And since this is still technically a gaming channel, I've got Apex Legends console gameplay. One of my more fun games with Chaos Axe Silencers going on, so I hope you guys enjoy that. And uh, this was obviously inspired by the Boomy incident. The short version of that is that somebody's been letting my dogs out on purpose maliciously for whatever reason and I had reason to believe the dog had actually been stolen so I put out a tweet and a video and a big reward and a hotline number people could call and when I put out that hotline number for the missing dog the phone started ringing immediately and didn't stop for about five hours unfortunately very few of the calls were about the dog and they were about 90 percent prank calls these calls came in several varieties there was quite a few of oh my god it's really him hangs up Ah, I can't believe it. Hang up. <gasps> Just like a gasp and they hang up. There was uh, quite a few people that called to ask about my penis size for some reason. Almost all of these were little kids. I got a couple of, how big is your wee wee? Yeah, real. And like you can hear the mom yelling at the kids in the background. I got about a dozen people telling me they found my dog and it's up my butt. Uh, this was about 50-50 kids or adults. Uh, I had about five or six people call in and say that they already killed the dog and I won't be getting him back too bad. Uh, had three or four people call in and say that they had the dog and that they were willing to return him for typically more money than what I was already offering, but I had to meet him somewhere really sketchy. And th the easy way to that is like, okay, send me pictures of Boomy and they couldn't do that. So that is all trolling, right? Uh, but the majority of it and like the, the biggest chunk of calls that I got all day were people calling and you would answer and they would just scream the n-word. I'm not gonna say it here in the video because I like having monetization on, but I'd, 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 I'd like be like, hello, did you find Boomy? In, 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 okay, hang up. Or tell like a sort of a, a story and be like, okay, what's your name? My name is, okay. Or uh, one guy had me going, he told me the dog was at a park, it was, it was nearby and that uh, some kid had picked him up. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, the kid said his name was N-Word. I'm like, oh, that's great. And he's like, you're an N-Word, N-Word, N-Word. And uh, we had almost as many people, but not a, quite as many people calling uh, to tell me that my wife ate the dog or give some kind of Asian slur towards her. You can, you can imagine them. I'm not even going to say them because I enjoy my monetization. And my wife answered probably the majority of these calls, and she's not as patient as I am. For those of you that have watched this channel for a long time, you know that my wife is not as patient or as forgiving as I am. And she started getting very mad very quickly and started making very disparaging comments about the human race in general, which is where the idea for today's video came from. Because being on YouTube and doing a YouTube, my brain is always kind of looking for video ideas. And my wife wanted to turn the phone off, or she said she wanted to harm some people, cause them bodily harm, uh, and she would just start answering angry and angry. But I encourage her to stick with it and try to be nice, which is very hard, and eventually I would end up taking over the phone calls. So at this point in the video, you're probably thinking that this is a, a sob story about getting prank called when I'm looking for the dogs, or I'm milking the boomy incident for more views, or that my conclusion is obviously gonna be that people are evil, because it was a really bad thing that happened, but the opposite is actually true, because while about 80 to 90 of those calls were mean, malicious prank calls in some way, there was a 10 to 20 percent group that was helpful. I got quite a few people calling saying, hey, I'm sorry for your loss. Sorry this happened. I hope you feel better. We, you know, I want you to know that your fans are here with you, supporting you. Uh, I got a slightly, it's supportive, but in, in, in almost a negative supportive sense, like some people that were just pissed off and like whoever is messing with your dogs or monsters, I want to insert insults here to them. I want to hunt them down and harm them. I got some well-meaning advice on places to look and how to secure the yard and how had some police officers from out of state contact me and out of all of this I got uh, four calls of people that thought that they had seen Boomy but they'd actually spotted a different dog somewhere in Dallas that was nearby and I got I think another four calls of people that had actually seen Boomy that had seen the video and had seen Boomy this morning but kind of like didn't recognize him or didn't think it was my Shiba and it was like somebody else's dog and this was really helpful because those four people left a little trail of information for us to follow. We could see, oh, he's moving this direction, like away from the house. And we got a call saying, hey, I think I saw Boomy this morning at some apartments and some guy that lived at the apartments came out and like 
picked him up. And then I got a call a little bit later from a person who says, hey, I live at those same apartments and I picked up Boomi this morning and it helped me verify that this person was legit. And you're thinking like, oh, is Drifter really trying to turn this around and be positive about all this kind of mean stuff? I mean, didn't he just say that about four out of five people were making prank calls? Wouldn't that mean that about 80% of people are terrible? And the answer is no, not at all. So far, we've just been talking about phone calls. We've been talking about generally the nasty part of it all. The reality is that the YouTube and Twitter posts got insanely massive support from around the gaming community just huge out of control support numbers there were literally tens of thousands of fans retweeting sharing leaving good comments uh, sending it there were people like sending emails and text messages to, to family members that lived here in Dallas and people that took off work to go look or got out of school and decided to walk around there's tons of Dallas pet owners that stepped up and shared it across various networks. Gen does, like Texans in general were here. There were lots and lots of like streamers and YouTubers that I follow and or I'm aware with, uh, aware of that shared. There were tons of like pro gamers that stepped up, content creators, owners of organizations, companies that sponsored me like gaming peripheral companies, stuff like that. Even content creators overseas that just, uh, God bless them, they're still sharing. And it was just flooded with a ridiculous amount of support uh, from the entire community. It was actually insane. And the support was overwhelmingly positive by about 99.9% .9 online. Of course, you know, there's some dickheads and trolls, but it was, it, was, it was just like an overwhelming flood of positivity. There were people that I know that I have not spoken to in years or had very little contact with that, that stepped up to share and there were creators whose videos that I watch but that I don't really communicate with on social media because I'm, I'm a fan of other people and I watch other content creators here at home with my wife and some of these people just kind of showed up out of nowhere to share the post with Boomy and try to help get him back and there were just like it was it was a ridiculous overflowing amount of positive support however out of all of this at the end of the day, as sad as it is for both me and my wife, it's easier for us to focus on the hundred or so dickheads making prank calls and miss out on the hundreds of thousands of people that were offering help. And I think the reason for this is that human beings are just, 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 our brains are just wired a little backwards. For the last, I don't know how many hundred thousand years or however God made us or whatever you want to call it, that we are designed to focus on threats. If we focus on things that are threatening, we survive longer. So we focus on berries that are poisonous, you know, tigers in the bushes, you know, uh, bad weather, some, some threat in the tribe, another person, whatever. And by focusing on these things, we learn and avoid problems. Unfortunately, what we don't focus on, just as like a species, is things that go right. If it's going right, we don't even notice it. That's why when you look at the news, it's pretty much all negative news because we just don't care when things are going right. Our brains aren't wired to really intake that information very well. It's easier for us to remember being hurt than being helped, which is kind of sad. So to judge the human race in today's good versus evil video, you have to take the emotional context out of it and step back just a little bit <clears throat> and kind of look at the human race as a whole like analytically and looking at it like that I'd say that most people are good within some certain limits if we made an alignment chart with let's say evil all the way on one side and good all the way on the other side I think the average person would be probably slightly into the good section maybe like 25 percent into the good section like a little gooder than average maybe like a lawful good if you want to call it like that the majority of people throughout my life have not gone out of their way to hurt others. They aren't criminals. They don't, they don't seek chaos and theft. Uh, most people really are probably closer to neutral in the mind your own business category. They're interested in themselves and their family and close friends and not a whole lot of other people, but they're not malicious toward other people. And they are often kind enough to help when necessary or when needed or offer a little bit of support, something you know, like in this instance, like a retweet or a favor. It's something like it's really, really easy to do. And that little bit of extra good is usually enough to motivate people to do kind things in simple ways. And that this is as long as the request isn't taxing. As we discussed in a previous video, I think it was about two weeks ago now, if somebody needs your help and it's inconvenient or if it's taxing you are going to be much less likely to offer that 
if it costs you nothing. And the best example of this, they did a study at, I think it was like a Jesuit, Jesuit, Jesuit university, it's like a Catholic university somewhere. And they would give priests in training uh, a sermon and say, like, they'd have to teach a class on the Good Samaritan, which, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the Bible, so much context for this. The Good Samaritan is a Bible story where the Samaritan, who is a, a lower class and undesirable, is the only person to help an injured Israelite on the side of the road when his own people walk past him. So he's the Good Samaritan. Everybody else ignored him. So they had to give this, this presentation. And, uh, oh, by the way, I'm sorry we have to do this, but it's like 15 minutes and it's on the other side of the university. So these poor priests in training were given this big responsibility and they had to do the sermon fast so they were like sprinting across the university they were behind they were inconvenienced they were having a hard day and the trick was they didn't really have to give a presentation but they had a dude laying in a ditch pretending to be hurt and asking for somebody to help him get up and see how many of the priests in training would do that very few did because they were taxed they were constrained for time it was inconvenient it took effort one of them famously even jumped over the person in the ditch begging for help and this is kind of a psychological bias in your brain if you think about it there's maybe a lot of days where you gave money to a homeless person or you bought them a sandwich or you did something nice for your parents but these were days where you were probably already having a good day and you didn't have a whole lot to do and you just had some spare time and you went out and did it. It's a lot harder to do that when you're squeezed for time and when your, your, your life gets in the way. But anyway, <clears throat> aside from all that, it still means that overall people are pretty good. It just some days were a little bit unmotivated. So for those of you that have watched this video and that you've learned anything today, I want to ask you to do one thing. Today, I want you to do one kind thing for somebody else. Something a little inconvenient, something that takes a little extra motivation, just a little bit of good. Just go out of your way and do one good thing that you wouldn't normally do, and I think it'll probably change your entire week. Guys, if you enjoyed this video or this kind of content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll probably have some more gaming-focused stuff coming up in the future, but I think my next video, which I might have to wait two or three days on, is going to be a massive 30 to 40 minute breakdown of exactly what the Mueller report is about. So that's, that, that's, that's a hard project. Anyway, Drifter out.